stop crashing out over hydrate analysis. Anytime you're working with gravimetric analysis, that, yeah, it sounds really fancy, but what we are doing is we're just trying to isolate the mass of whatever substance we're studying. And the same is true with hydrates. So let's say you're given all of this lab data and you're asked to find the missing number in front of H2O in this hydrate formula. Let's walk through this process because no matter which hydrate you're working with, the process looks exactly the same. And what are you doing nine times out of 10 with gravimetric analysis? You are subtracting the masses and that's where we're gonna start. You wanna find the mass of your anhydrous salt. So that's the salt without the water because and literally means without anhydrous water okay so that's just the salt just by itself so in this case cobalt to chloride the whole goal of this process is to be able to compare the water to the anhydrous salt so guess what we got to find the mass of water next so you're going to look at the final mass where all the water has been driven off compare that to the initial mass with the crucible don't even worry about the crucible just look for the difference between those two and you'll have your mass of water loss so that is always step one find the masses of each of those step two i bet you can guess we're always going to convert into moles so find the moles of water lost first just by dividing by the molar mass of water now we have our moles of water i bet you can guess where this is going yep next up we got to find the moles of the anhydrous salt. Quickly determine the molar mass of that cobalt 2 chloride. Take your initial mass, 1.53 grams, divide by the molar mass, and you'll have your moles of your anhydrous salt. And I would argue that's the easy part, right? Now, how do we figure out the formula? Thankfully, it really is not bad either. So now what we want to do is we want to have the ratio of the moles of water per every one formula unit of our ionic salt. So how are we going to do that? We're literally going to take our moles of water and divide that by the moles of the cobalt 2 chloride. So basically your goal is to see if, you know, I, I had one mole of cobalt 2 chloride, how many moles of water would I have? We do this, we get 5.98, that rounds up to six. So this is cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. It's a really fun compound, actually changes colors based on whether or not it is hydrated. Hope this is helpful. Put your request for my next tutorial in the comment section.